Hello, this is a miniature lecture on milk fever in the dog, the horse, the goat, and other ungulates. What happens after pregnancy, essentially, or in fact in and around the pregnancy and after parturition is we end up with um, all of the calcium in the body, mostly in the bones, moving out into the bloodstream and going to the milk that's being produced, essentially, for um, uh, the, uh, suspend, or the, the support of the uh, neonate. The problem is, is that it can, in fact, take so much calcium out of the system, essentially, that there's no, not enough calcium in the system for the neurological tissue to function. And we get a hypocalcemic condition, in other words, low calcium. And then we end up with hypocalcemic tetany in this case, that the, the cow is down, so downer cow can't stand. About 5 to 10 percent of milk cows will go through this type of problem. It's routinely treated with uh, uh, calcium, glycogen, uh, phosphorus essentially is put into the system uh, parenterally uh, through, their, through uh, the vein or actually through the subcutaneous tissue. We can get these animals back up again. One of the ways that we prevent it and also treat it is that we'll take, for instance, um, I don't have a cow. Uh, thing here to show you is but we'll take a let's take a generalized creature in this case a, a horse like cow device here okay horse like cow and so what we can do then is we can utilize um, uh, a somatovisceral therapy to take care of this animal which we discussed to you rather in detail in the vomtech.com module 4 and also module 2 essentially easy to do essentially and that can be enough to get the cow up and running and basically it could take a, it could take less than 15 minutes before the cow says oh well i guess i got enough calcium now it gets up and walks away we can also do that without touching the animal essentially we're using frequencies that are designed to try to optimize in fact this particular situation what we'll do is we'll laser this animal for frequencies that increase the blood supply, such as 300, 100, 4, and also 54, which is a frequency for hormonal rehabilitation. And another weird frequency, 141, is used as a means to try to um, actually balance out the, um, all of the hormones that are being produced at that time that are trying to move this thing out of the system. We can use a pituitary frequency uh, for the calcitonin, essentially, that is also produced produced by the parathyroid hormones essentially and that can actually be done too and that frequency is 59 cycles per second 59 cycles per second directed towards the pituitary or the parathyroids essentially has been enough to actually bring these animals from the ground up and standing up and actually normally uh, chewing their cud if you will or chewing their uh, and uh, walking around looking relatively normal we'll see this problem in the in the dog less frequently essentially but it can occur and we basically when we see an animal down like that we know exactly that the animal needs parenteral fluids calcium etc etc and we can do that or we can use this approach too. what we do is we very commonly see this as an emergency situation in the small animal and then what we'll do is we'll endeavor to use all of these therapies to try to prevent that from occurring in the in the future and also to try to uh, optimize its function or response essentially with within a period of hours. We very commonly also do not want to have stagnant uh, milk in the mammy, so what we'll do is we'll also treat with 784, which is a frequency that we use to um, uh, negate the possibilities of mastitis, essentially. Mastitis is another um, lecture that we'll talk about um, in a YouTube video that you can search for too with this group. This has been a lecture on milk fever in the dog, the cow, and also goat essentially in llamas we see it also there too it's not very high uh, uh, probability in those but it's very common in the bovine which i don't have a, a thing for um thank you have a great day